Dawn, the heart of downtown St. John's. Probably the last place you'd expect to hear the story of an inshore fishery, but the pull of the water is everywhere in this province, even here in the capital city. The grounds are just a stone's throw away. I'm Pauling Hill, and this is Huey Alcock. He won't tell you his age, but he admits to being one of the oldest inshore fishermen left in St. John's, one of the hard time fishermen. He raised a family of nine on the fishery, and at 60-something, he's still at it even in the middle of a moratorium. You'll know Huey by his white hat, his boat by her green gunnels. It's been this way for more than 50 years. Huey's sons both followed him on the water, Ronnie and his older brother, Roy. All their lives, they fished against the backdrop of a city. Now they fish in the face of a moratorium. Not codfish, of course, lumpfish. Everyone agrees lumpfish is a poor substitute for cod. The Alcocks never bothered before. But now at least it gets them on the water. And at this stage, that's what counts. Man, he's skip them on the water too, right? He's worse than all of us put together. If he can't get around the boats or on the wharf, he'll go crazy out of here. So when we mentioned him, he, he was our game for him. Just to get, like you say, get on the water, right? I don't know, something to do. Get up, there's nowhere to go. All day long. Especially in the city. You're in the outport somewhere now, you know. It might be a bit different. Not into a home in town. Get up every morning, go over to the wharf, come back. Go over the wharf in the evening. That's some boring life. Come on, skip a hold back there. They call lump goldfish in some bays. With the roe selling at two twenty a pound, lumpfish can be quick, easy money, but not here. The lump are scarce on these grounds. This season, the Elcocks won't make the six thousand dollars they sunk into their nets. Roy is giving them a hand on this trip, but he ended up taking a land job, trucking fish to help make ends meet. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I shouldn't be out in boats. But it's not much sense coming out here. We're not going to make none. I can make a few dollars on the land now. 
If Huey had his way, he'd have picked office jobs at Confederation Building for his boys, but Ronnie wouldn't hear of it. Neither would Roy. The water was what they wanted, so eventually Huey let them come aboard. Another generation of Alcocks joined the ranks of the inshore fishermen of St. John's. remembers 24 trap crews fishing out of St. John's. Over 200 men, including some from the outports, men who'd come to the city to help make up crews. Fish was big then and plentiful. It was landed and sold in St. John's Harbor, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds. In 56 alone, fishermen split 18,000 kentles for Steer's salt fish plant. Job's had all the fresh they could handle. It was the same at Crosby's fish meal plant. Fishermen worried about price, about what trap berth they draw, but no one worried this could change so drastically, that a time would come when you were not allowed to jig a fish, much less at a trap, that there could ever be a moratorium on codfish. I didn't pay no mind to it for a while, I didn't bother me, like, you know, and then until I realized that we were finished and I had a girl tied up. I didn't realize it, you know, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, like it didn't, it didn't affect me at all until I realized we are doing nothing. All last summer, and all last winter, and now this summer, nothing bad to do. Them's only now, you know, you realize how bad it is. It was just like a death in the family. That's the way it was. It was just like something was taken from us that we just couldn't believe it was. I never ever thought something like that could happen. That's what it was like. So the Elcox and their crew settled for lump row on grounds that were traditionally rich with cod. Their grounds they now share with only a handful of other fishing families, all that's left of the old inshore crews of St. John. The crews of that other era, when fish was thick and the battery was covered in flakes. The battery was the heart of the inshore, the lip of the narrows, the city's fringes. It belonged to the inshore fishery. The battery was once gatekeeper to the city, the site of a British fort set up to defend St. John's against the French. By the mid-1800s, fishing families had begun to take root. They clung like barnacles to a rock. And their fish grew. They worked under the shadow of the city, family after family. The Riches, the Garlands, the Piercies, and the Wells. Otto Wells with his brothers, Jack and Alec. They were here when St. John's Harbor was so clean they could wash their fish in it when they could go out at daylight and jig 3,000 pounds by dinner time. Uh, 
Otto's retired now. He has been for 10 years. But he still lives in the battery and still spends most of his time in his store. When we were at his hard old time, he should never have well or thing. He said I never fishing on that. He said there's that bow. He never fishing the way to fishing. He wouldn't be able to do it. Otto was fishing before Confederation, before unemployment insurance. There was no such thing as stamps for the winter then. So he'd fish till weather drove him ashore. He was often out in boat till just to make enough to get his family through the winter. Elsie Wells cooked for the entire trap crew, six, sometimes seven men. That meant up every morning by five. If I had a dollar for every meal, I cook for them. Men. Then there were children to look after and salt fish to be made. Elsie and her sister-in-law were two of the women who worked on the flakes, spreading the fish to dry. I loved it. I used to take my youngsters out and put them down in a tub on the flake and, and all this much. She never had no children, Mrs. Wills never, see? Ellie's wife. But I had four. Just take them out in the mornings and put them, stick them down the tub. They'd stay there. I spread the flake for the fish myself and her, you know. Yeah. Two of us used to spread the fish for them while they were fishing. Elsie and Otto have watched the fishery change and watched the battery change. It may still seem a world apart from the city, but it's nothing like it used to be when the inshore was thriving. Only a few from that time are left, a few like Otto, still clinging to the rocks. He wouldn't leave the battery up, would he? He wouldn't no, leave. I don't but I would now. I mean, I'd go in town now because I'm not out here now, really, as far as I'm concerned, you know. But, he won't. but while he's here, I'll stay here. <laughs> I wouldn't deny him that, you know. Elsie wouldn't deny him his little boat either. On fine mornings in summer, the battery still wakes to the sound of his make and break. Otto doesn't worry about his Acadia breaking down. He's got enough spare parts aboard to practically run the thing anyway. So we just dodge along. You were still allowed to jig a fish when we took these pictures. It didn't matter much though. We couldn't even hook a sculpin. That's not him. Not even tall. I'm not really know five times, huh? And I got, I got one made of fish. <laughs> Did you ever think that you'd see such a change in your lifetime? Never heard it. Never. No, I didn't. No, really, I didn't think you'd ever say it. Today, the day you go and wouldn't get a of fish. <laughs> never ever thought it'd come. Not around here, anyway. St. John's is always a... Uh, uh, but, uh, St. John's always go to fish. Never hardly ever failed. It saddens Otto to see it like this, to be virtually alone on grounds that were once peppered with trap crews. But at least fish isn't his livelihood anymore. For him now, the water is just a hobby. But not so for others, the ones who have sheds full of cod traps, boats to keep up. They were a dying breed anyway, these inshore fishermen of St. John's. What happens now with the whole industry in crisis? We'll look to the future when Land and Sea returns.
Hitty Vitty, otherwise known as the gut. That other corner of the city where time seems to have stood still. It's where Eli Tucker set down stakes in 1961. He'd been renting space in the battery for years, but he wanted something of his own. So he came here and built a premises, back when there was big fish and lots of it. You don't get none of that big, long fish now, like we used to, just the odd one. But then it was, if you'd get there to be fish that you could only dip one and two at a time. Yeah, those days are over. These, those days won't come back anymore. The price wasn't there, though. You had to catch a lot to get by, and that's just what Eli Tucker did. His premises grew, and his son came on board, then his grandson. They built more boats, bought more gear, and they did well, right until the end. Their last season, they landed more than a million pounds of codfish. Then came the moratorium. The premises, Eli figures he could sell, but not his gear. We got nine here now, nine boats. I got six, and my son's got three. What are you going to do with them? What am I going to do with my cat traps? I got a salmon trap up there now and 35 salmon eats. Nobody wants them. You're not allowed to use them. I got two captain traps. I got a mackerel trap from Nova Scotia, designed mackerel trap for kitchen mackerel. Brought it in from Nova Scotia 20 years ago. And I got 10 cod traps. All this fishing tackle. Have I got to tell me sons? There's no fish. You know, the industry is finished. And there's only one way we can find out. And that's the wheat to see when they open it up again, if there's any fish. I don't think there's going to be any fish. You can't grow fish in two years. First, you've got to have the fish to lay it spawn. And then the fish got to grow from that. Now, what are you going to do in two years? Mm. At least it's a 20-year job. Any man to get any knowledge. And that's a long time to wait, isn't it, 20 years? Fish, right? Yeah. It sure is. That's to, to get fish enough to go around the hole like we, we was always used to. You won't find too many twine sheds in the west end of St. John's, but there is one in Ronnie Alcock's backyard. Like Eli's, packed full of gear the Alcocks aren't allowed to use. These are only lump nets, but they're an excuse to get together for what's become a Friday Elcock tradition. A feed and a few drinks. There's two buckets of riblets in the pot today. Skipper started one Friday afternoon and he gave it up and I had to take it up. He, he backed out of it. So he taught you how to cook as well as fish? Well, that's all I know is how to cook. He's dead and fresh fillet. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's what we were saying, though. These days, the Elcocks and their crew are biding their time. There's no talk of selling out or getting out of the fishery, only of toughing it out until the end of the moratorium, whenever that turns out to be. Even with Huey, who could have retired years ago. Yeah. Well, I don't want to retire. To what? What are you going to retire to? Tell me. Walk around the streets? Can't handle that. I mean, I'm a lifetime on the water, he's a lifetime on the water, and he's two lifetimes on the water, right? I mean, we went that lump year, basically for something to do. I mean, you could say we got $6,000 invested. Now, I don't think we'll ever get it back this year. But you know, we're, we're kept busy, we're active, we're still on the water, we're not lying off in bed. Can you see yourself, though, being forced out of the fishery, Ronnie? Mm, no. no way. No. No. I'm here to stay. Not me, anyway. I like it out. Not Jimmy. They're going to have to have some money to get me out. <laughs> That's for sure. They're going to have to have some money. Oh, Ten traps and now what gear we got? $250,000, $300,000 a year? They're going to have to have some money to get me out. 
But you're not. And, and the money's not the thing anyway. I don't want to get out of it because of the money now. Because I'm quite satisfied with what I'm doing. We're quite happy with what I'm doing. Like it's back at it. Well, I say we'll always be a fishery. Yes, we'll always be a fishery. But not like it was. Let's face it. If we get short, if we get clear of them draggers, it'll be a good fishery for the inshore fishery. Once you get rid of the draggers. That's our downfall, the draggers. Offshore and inshore. National Sea and that crowd, that's what spoiled our fishery. And I'll never forget that. That's, 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 that's the ruination of our fishery. Once, Huey Alcock tried to keep his sons away from the fishery. He wanted a better life for them, and that's when fishing was good. Now, things have never looked worse. Yet the Alcocks, all of them, seem happy with the choices they've made and are determined to see things through, to wait out the moratorium. I think they've done the right thing now. If you know, and they'll be always fishing, because we got so much gear, they'll always have to stay at us, you know. Yeah, yeah, quite happy. Do you worry about their future, Mr. Alcock? No. No, they're big and ugly enough to know the road but to work for ourselves and do what they got to do. They, if they can't get a living out of the size of them and, uh, you know, if they can't get a living out of forget it. <laughs> oh, there's a good club job here, huh? Me to the top lot. Here, John. Ah, there she is. There she is. Ah, oh, my Jesus sunny boy. Give me a bottle of big bottle of seven up. You like have eggs in your mouth. Uh -uh. Oh, my sunny boy, I told you to ask you. You never eat it. The other gas paints. <laughs> <laughs> my sunny. Hello. What's going on there, Ross? This is what you got to fight for, huh? Just stop. This is really. Around. Only time will tell whether the Alcocks can tough it out, whether there will even be a fishery to come back to. They're among the last of their kind here in St. John's, one of the last of the inshore fishing families. Part of the fishery that grew beneath the shadow of the city. That's it for us. This is the last show of the season. Thanks for watching, everyone. And don't forget about us. We'll be back this fall with a brand new series of programs for you. Until then, here's a little something to remind us by. A last look at some of the people you got to know this year on Land and Sea.